on yeah. Instagram, you said something that really resonated with me. And it's funny because I share the same mindset with wanting to surround myself with greatness and be around people that are really living their dreams. So you said something along the lines of by painting successful people through doing this, you get an idea of what their mentality is and it helps you mm. become a better person. And that is so powerful. So can you explain to me why painting icons such as Michael Jackson, Obama, Muhammad Ali and Beyonce helps you develop in your own life? Uh, so I, when I'm doing my paintings and stuff, I also often do quite a bit of research, I guess, on the mm -hmm. person that I'm painting. Yes. So I'll look into them, kind of get their story. Uh, so previous clients of yours include Will I Am, Melody Thornton from the Pussycat Dolls, Umar Kamani, who's the CEO of Pretty Little Thing, and so many more. And you're doing so well. How did you get your work initially into the hands of these people? And what did it feel like to have them hold your painting? Because I've mm -hmm. tried a lot of other stuff before I actually eventually got to that art. Yeah. But now, now that I've got it, it's now a case of, okay, cool, how far can I take it? And so yeah. I guess all that, I'm hoping that at some point all this hard work, doing interviews like these and whatnot yeah. will all kind of pay off, you know? Amazing. Thank you. So let's get into it. For everybody that doesn't know you yet, Lawrence, and they're being introduced to you for the first time, can you tell us who you are and how your love for painting began? Yeah, sure. So <laughs> I'm Lawrence. I'm an artist based in Essex, England, um, and I paint portraits of icons. Um, I've always kind of been fascinated with success and what it takes to kind of get to the top of um, your field mm -hmm. and so I choose to paint those kinds of people um I've been doing it for a short while now and kind of gone on to paint for some some people you might know in the public eye and stuff so Incredible. it seems to be going all right so far um and yeah amazing a, um how old were you when you started painting so I was 28 I'm 30 now so I've been painting for just over two years yeah wow you're so skilled I thought it was something you was doing since you was like four years old no, so I kind of gave up um, after college and okay. went had to make that decision of whether to go to uni to get a proper degree or whether to uh, kind of go into the art thing. And so I went for the for the business um, yeah. at uni and um, and yeah, kind of gave it up. But then kind of 10 years later, which was two years ago now, I got back into it. And so, yeah, I've been doing it for two years. Wow, that's so interesting. I was just about to ask you, yeah, so um, when did you realise you could do this for a career and start actively placing all your energy into building your brand? So that was when you was 28? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, it didn't start off like that. It was it was literally just a case of, I hadn't painted for ages. And I was like, cool, let me see if I can still do it. Yeah. Um, and on the off chance, I painted um, Kanye West. And um, yeah, my friend, he'd just been on a TV show. And so he posted it and kind of ever since then, once you posted it, I've continued to kind of work and, and uh, I guess, do paintings on the side. Um, and then more recently, it's got to a point where I could actually earn enough to kind of surpass what I was doing as my day job. And so yeah. that's when I kind of I've started to make the decision to kind of pull back on that and, and kind of pursue the art. That is incredible. So regarding <laughs> your process, how long does it take you to complete a painting from start to finish? Yeah, sure. So, um, I mean, I usually work on squares. I don't know if you, yeah, you can see that in the Amazing. background. That's a square. <laughs> so that's uh, one metre by one metre. Mm -hmm. uh, and that would take usually around 35 hours. So wow. realistically, that's what, seven to 10 days usually? Yeah. So yeah, that gives you a rough, rough idea. Yeah. That is crazy. And do you like to sketch it first and then paint over it? Or is it just sometimes just off the cuff? Yeah, so it, I'll no, I'll sketch out the image first, and then on top of that, once the stencil's down, then I'll be painting um, over those lines and kind of do, doing my thing on top of that. Crazy, incredible. And a consistency I've noticed within your work is your love for black and white paintings, and they're so captivating. What is it about the simplicity of black and white, and why do you enjoy painting with these colours so much? Yeah, so, um, <coughs> sorry. I initially started uh, painting in just normal colour, mm -hmm. uh, you know, true to tone, uh, kind of whatever I saw. Yeah. But I was at, because I'd been out of doing it for so long, I then started to um, go to black and white just because yeah. I couldn't get it right and it was annoying me. <laughs> um, 
And so um, I went to black and white. I, ha- I am going to go back to colour. Okay. Um, there's a couple of things that I want to try first mm-hmm. um, to kind of evolve and develop my my style. And then once that's in place, yeah. then I will start introducing colour back in. But it's, mm-hmm. it's just a bit of a process. But I think the black and white looks quite timeless. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. So hence why I've kind of kept at it for a little bit, you know? Yeah. It's amazing. It looks like like your signature. Like every time I go through your page and I see a bit of your work, it's just stunning. So yeah, it's definitely yeah. working. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. I guess you kind of get known for one type of thing. And mm-hmm. so, it, you know, it'll be interesting to see how, when I do eventually go over to colour, like how that's perceived. Because yeah. Um, yeah, obviously up until now, it's just been black and white. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. So on your yeah. Instagram, you said something that really resonated with me. And it's funny because I share the same mindset with wanting to surround myself with greatness and be around people that are really living their dreams. So you said something along the lines of by painting successful people through doing this, you get an idea of what their mentality is and it helps mm. you become a better person. And that is so powerful. So can you explain to me why painting icons such as Michael Jackson, Obama, Muhammad Ali and Beyonce helps you develop in your own life uh, so I when I'm doing my paintings and stuff I also often do quite a bit of research I guess on the mm-hmm. person that I'm painting yes. so I'll look into them kind of get their story um listen I, I do a lot of kind of um watching of um their stuff on YouTube and, and yes. those kinds of bits you know to kind of um get into the get into their kind of world if mm-hmm. you will without sounding too heady um <laughs> And yeah, you realise that there are are consistent themes, although they do it in their different industries and their different uh, fields of work. There's there's definitely like consistent themes that kind of uh, apply to a thing. So, yeah, it's just something I've always been interested in. Amazing. And is there a person that inspires you the most out of all the people that you've painted? Out of the ones I've painted? Yeah. (laughs) I'm literally looking around now trying (laughs) to to see which one. I'll tell you what, um, what was quite interesting, actually, I almost... It didn't feel like doing any kind of research was um Michael Jordan wow. because um when I painted it it was the when the last dance documentary come out incredible yeah on Netflix so it was like and that was that was so good because it was yeah. exactly the all the things I talk about and kind of I guess promote or what I want my work to be about is exactly yeah. what was in that um documentary so I'd have to probably say that one yeah, I love Michael Dolan. That is incredible. You're right. He is a legend. So yeah. what do you love most about having your own business? And then also, what's the most difficult part about being an entrepreneur to you? I think the most difficult part is just keeping yourself motivated to keep going. Because mm-hmm. like when you're in a job as such, you can coast some days. If you're not, not really feeling it, you know that you're still going to get paid at the end of the day. Whereas you. if you don't paint a picture or uh, or something doesn't sell then you're not getting paid and so mm. it puts an added pressure on you so I'd say yeah. that would be kind of the downside but the, the upside is that you kind of you get to control your time and I think that you can't get back time and so that is probably the, the freedom of being able to do what you want when you want yeah is almost um yeah I would say the ma- one of the main things for me especially yeah. having worked in a career where you're being told all the time what to, what to do and yeah. stuff like that so yeah wonderful and yeah you're right it is beautiful especially when you're at the point when you're seeing it taking off and your work is selling you can see like the transition into your dream life and you're like okay yeah. this is motivating me to keep going so yeah that's amazing. yeah it's, it's like um what I quite like as well is that like if you have a job you're kind of you get paid what you get paid and you've got a not cat but like unless you're in sales or something like that you you get salary right yeah but whereas this it's like yeah you could make nothing but at the same time you could also make well whatever limitless so um so yeah the the idea is to right as far as you can go (laughs) yeah eventually be up there (laughs) i love that what advice would you give to artists looking to sell their own work and set up their own business yeah, sure. So, I mean, I feel like they're too... Well, I mean, I can answer it in the, in the same. If I was to tell someone to, who was just starting out, I would say, tell your story online the most effective way you can across the social plat- media platforms that matter the most mm-hmm. in the moment. Mm-hmm. So what I mean by that at the moment is Instagram, Clubhouse, LinkedIn, yeah, and TikTok. And so what you're doing, whether it's, um, I don't know, a candle brand or or whether it's a tennis coaching course, mm-hmm. what you're doing as a business is you're a media company. And so you're putting out 
content about what you do that will help other people yeah. or people will be interested in it and from there you'll begin to attract clients mm-hmm. um and that's the way i kind of run my thing with art so i all that's why i'm so keen on showing my artwork and the process behind it yeah um because i'm getting people or trying to get people to care about what i'm doing and so by showing my process that gets them invested yeah. in what i'm doing and then the paintings and and your product sells itself from there I love that. Yeah. And it's so that sounds to me like just getting people invested in who you are as a person and the brand and the philosophy behind it. And I love that it's like similar to I always say like Rihanna is a perfect example of that because she could attach her name to anything she believes in. And all of her fans will go running because we believe in Rihanna. So I love that. I love that. Yeah, I think that um, brand is everything. Because yeah. once you have that and an established brand and a well-known, you can then leverage off different points of interest. Yeah. Like you just said there, so Rihanna can go and do a swim line where if she wanted to, or she could make lipstick, you know, yeah. she can do whatever. <laughs> right, whatever like lipstick, and it will all sell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Incredible. So previous clients of yours include Will I Am, Melody Thornton from the Pussycat Dolls, Umar Kamani, who's the CEO of Pretty Little Thing, and so many more. And you're doing so well. How did you get your work initially into the hands of these people and what did it feel like to have them hold your paintings <laughs> um yeah so I mean I like I said I got well not lucky one of my friends was was on a tv show um and so that was my first when he posted that on his social media he had a following and so that yeah. then generated more sales but I think where I've had a um, a career in tv for so long I've got to know a fair few I guess influential people or you know people that are you you would probably know mm-hmm. um and so they have since seen as I post my journey which is what yeah. I was speaking about before they've then seen that and they're like oh cool I'd love one too but for a long long time it was given away free paintings because ah. um, people don't necessarily care about what you do <laughs> and so I would leverage their audience by getting yeah. them to post my work yeah. but I would in return for a free painting so I did that for a long long time so um yes but if you don't have them type of content uh sorry if you don't have those type of contacts what mm-hmm. I would be doing is working my way up from one of the smaller influencers mm-hmm. to then obviously you, you know that you get someone with I don't know 50,000 followers and then you yeah. manage to get someone who's got 100,000 followers and, yeah you know that was just kind of a ploy that I used to kind of leverage and get to the types of people that I want to be painting for so yeah incredible and that's really good advice to anyone listening about really utilizing the power of social media and you're right these people are only like a click of a button away and once you get one it really gives you the confidence to know that you can get more so I love that yeah yeah I guess it's like it's like going off the back of little wins isn't it you know you get one that kind of fuels you onto the next and stuff yeah. but but I would strongly strongly advise Clubhouse because okay. at the minute you can for the it's like a, an audio network so you can literally go into a room with Elon Musk uh, and he'll just be on the app so I would say yeah that's a that's a real uh, place that you can potentially get your work seen and, and it's easy to connect with people that are kind of probably where you're trying to hit if that's what you're trying to achieve incredible I need clubhouse I have an android so it just will not let me join <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I, yeah, yeah I got invited like months ago and I was like I'm really missing out <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 at the moment yeah I forget that because I've I've got a um an iphone so yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, but that is sick. Big potential on there at the minute, for sure. Definitely, definitely. So are there any exciting projects um, upcoming for you or collaborations in the near future? And what is the ultimate big dream for you? Yeah, that's that's a that's a really good question, actually. Um, I think I want to get to a stage where as soon as I've made a painting that's not a commission, mm-hmm. um, it just sells. So, like, I can make anything and it will just sell like that. Um, and I've also got a target of how many prints I want to sell um, as well. So that's kind of, I guess, the business minded goal to, yeah. to, to kind of first get to. Um, in terms of who I'm trying to reach, it would just to be paint for more similar people. Mm-hmm. Sorry, that's terrible English. <laughs> <laughs> I want to pay for more people like I already do but yep. on a more regular basis, I guess, um, would be the ultimate goal and kind of get into the to the CEOs and the, the big bankers and you know that's kind of just a personal goal of, of mine that I want to get to so yeah that would be where I'm looking to go. I love that do you um in the future think you want to do like any collaborations with brands like for example like a Yeezy yeah. or fashion yeah. and stuff that'd be really good yeah. 
Yeah, no, I'd love to. I think that um, at some point I'd love to kind of get a manager on as such that takes care of like just sales. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple of people that help me out like doing different parts um, of things at the moment, so social media and stuff like that. But I think kind of sales and kind of, I guess, building those relationships with brands and stuff, that'd be amazing. Like, I think that I've been asking myself that question a lot recently, whether I see myself eventually going to a gallery or something Mm -hmm. like that, where I would much prefer to do like, brand deals not to say you can't do both yeah but that would be a lot more of my focus rather than trying to go into a gallery or anything like that first off (laughs) amazing so um I have mentioned before in terms of people that you look up to and you mentioned Michael Jordan are there any painters or artists that you look up to and love their work yeah sure uh there's a a girl called CJ Hendry um she's unbelievable she paints like really hyper realistic stuff um, there's a girl called Sophie T who I love just for the, uh, for her business acumen mm-hmm. um, and how big she's been able to make her brand as an artist mm-hmm. and then there's a guy called Timmy Sneaks as well just his work is just really cool and like his aesthetic of how he presents things is just on a different level um, so yeah oh and a- Alec Monopoly as well for lifestyle so they're, wow. all, they're the kind of combination of people that I'm trying to take bits and pieces from to kind of yeah. amalgamate to so yeah get to where I'm trying to be I love it that's like four shout outs and four people you just introduced me to so (laughs) I'll definitely check them out so as an incredible painter and an artist dedicating yourself to excelling at your craft and really making your mark in this world what does it mean to you to truly give your all or nothing I think it's like for me it's like trying to reach my potential Mm -hmm. Um, I've been given a gift that I'm good at art and so I'm just trying to do the best I can with it yeah it's taken a long time to try to find that thing that was um gonna stick for me because I've mm-hmm. tried a lot of other stuff before I actually eventually got to that art yeah but now now that I've got it it's now a case of okay cool how far can I take it and so yeah. I guess all that I'm hoping that at some point all this hard work doing interviews like these and whatnot yeah. will all kind of pay off you know Definitely. And it will, as long as you keep going and, you know, just stay focused on your own lane. It definitely will. And that's really interesting. (laughs) Fingers crossed anyway. (laughs) Right? It will, it will. And it's amazing that you mentioned um, trying loads of different things because it's true, like as 20-somethings and um, some people are older, they really try different things. They're like, oh, that's not working. They try and give up. But you're right. You've Mm. got to find your thing. And even though it might take a while, you keep going, you'll eventually find it. That's really powerful. Yeah, I think... um... I think uh, there's so much pressure on to, uh, on people nowadays to have it all figured out and stuff. Yeah. And like, I don't really feel like even I haven't figured out now. I don't think anyone really does. It's just the perception that you have of other people. I agree with um, you. But now that I have found something that I like and I'm good at and I can do on a consistent basis and I'm yeah. not relying on other people to help me get it done. That's then it. Then I'm like, cool, I can go with this. And now I can really dedicate time to it. And so, yeah, I think you know was talking about the principles of kind of success and that kind of thing Mm -hmm. consistency is one of those massive massive parts of that yeah and so yeah and so when you don't want to do it you're still going to do it when you've got swimming practice that you need to get to and you can still come back and do your thing then that's that's really where it's at and so continuing to do it over a long period of time hopefully it will only be a matter of time before before that's you know? it right just pushing through pushing through even when you're not yeah. in the mood you're right you're right I yeah. love that thank you so much for your time today and yeah I really appreciate your words of wisdom <laughs> no not at all thank you for having me well amazing I'll let you get back to your day and thank you again <laughs> no worries thank you you're more than welcome take care bye <laughs>